Hello, my name is Gina Cornett and I'm a technical marketing engineer for the Cisco SD-WAN product. In this video, we will talk about the role that the VBON controller plays in the Cisco SD-WAN network. The Cisco SD-WAN solution is divided up into several different planes in which the different components are categorized. We have the orchestration plane, the management plane, the control plane, and the data plane. But today we're going to be focusing on the VBON orchestrator, which makes up the orchestration plane. The VBON is a separate security hardened virtual software component, which has some very important functions. First, it is the first point of authentication into the SD-WAN overlay network. Next, it orchestrates control and management plane for all SD-WAN devices. And last, it facilitates NAT traversal. So now let's look at each one of these functions in greater detail to see what this all means. Let's look at our first function where the VBON is the first point of authentication into the SD-WAN network. Here I have an SD-WAN network with one vManage, two vSmarts, and one VBON. Note that this picture doesn't necessarily reflect the correct numbers of controllers in the network because I'm just trying to focus on function here. It also shows a high level view because there are actually additional control connections between our VBON and our other controllers. But for now, let's just take this simplified view. The vManage and vSmart controllers establish control connections to the VBON using Datagram Transport Layer Security, or DTLS. DTLS is built on UDP and uses certificate-based authentication in combination with symmetric encryption to secure the data that is sent over it. When a WAN edge router attempts to enter the overlay, it sends a connection request to the vBond. Note that if you're not doing automated provisioning, then every SD-WAN device is required to be configured with the vBond hostname or its IP address information so it knows how to reach the vBond when it is brought into the network. When the vBond receives a connection request, it goes through a series of checks. First, it checks the device certificate of the edge router and then it checks the serial number and chassis number of the edge router and compares it to the list received from the vManage. Note that certain checks occur on the edge router side as well. We're focused on the vBond side for now. Once all of our checks are passed, a control connection to the vBond is formed. Now we can look at the next major function. vBond orchestrates the control and management plane for all SD-WAN devices. So once the WAN edge router establishes the control connection to the vBond, the vBond will communicate to the WAN edge router the list of vSmart and vManage controllers, and in turn, will inform the controllers that the WAN edge is joining the network. The WAN edge initiates DTLS or TLS control connections, depending on the configuration, and each controller authenticates and authorizes the edge router before the control connections can be accepted and established. But what we have shown here is for a single transport. For other transports that are present, the edge routers make control connections to one vBond and multiple vSmart controllers over them also. The number of vSmart controller connections on each transport depends on the WAN edge configuration. Note that there is only one vManage connection made regardless of the number of transports. So once the correct number of control connections have been made, the WAN edge connections to the VBON can now be torn down. VBON connections to other SD-WAN controllers in the network are persistent. So now the control connections are made, we can receive any needed configurations from vManage, and we can form overlay management protocol or OMP peering sessions. With the vSmarts, only one peering session is formed from each WAN edge to each vSmart. Let's watch this process again with a second WAN edge router over one transport. Once our peering is established, control information can be exchanged with our vSmart controllers, which includes our TLOC information, routes, and encryption keys. We can exchange TLOC information, which stands for transport location, which represents the attachment point where a WAN edge connects to the WAN transport. It includes the IP address of the TLOC along with other information. Also included in this exchange is the routing prefixes from our remote site and the encryption keys needed to encrypt or decrypt traffic to or from a particular TLOC. The vSmarts will exchange this information from other WAN edge routers in the network, behaving like route reflectors for OMP information. 
So now we should have the information we need to establish the secure data plane to other remote sites, mainly our TLOC information and encryption keys needed to secure data. For simplicity, we will remove some diagram details and stick with one transport for illustration purposes. Data plane is established by starting encrypted bidirectional forwarding detection or BFD sessions between peers over each transport. Each edge tries to connect to the TLOC IP address of its peer, which the peer advertised. But what happens if these edge routers are sitting behind NAT devices? They are not aware of the NAT device, and if BFD sessions aren't directed to their post NAT addresses, those connections will fail. And this brings us to our last topic for discussion for VBON, and that is that VBON facilitates NAT traversal by functioning as a STUN server. STUN is short for Session Traversal Utilities for NAT, and it is a tool used by hosts to discover the presence of a NAT device and to discover the MAP public IP address and port number allocated by the NAT device. So let's revisit our WAN Edge router joining the Cisco SD-WAN network for the first time. And this time, it is behind a firewall performing NAT. The WAN Edge router initiates a connection with the VBOND, and because VBOND sits on the public side of the connection, it learns both the public or post NAT IP address of 6410.10.1, and the WAN Edge communicates its private or local address of 10.10.10.1. So the VBOND discovers both the private and public IP addresses for that particular TLOC and the VBOM passes this information back to the WAN Edge router. And now the WAN Edge router can communicate this private and public IP information with its TLOC to the vSmart controllers so it can be distributed to other Edge routers. And these routers can then establish BFD sessions to each other, even if some routers are behind a firewall. So now we can see what a crucial role the VBOM plays in the SD-WAN network. Not only is it the first point of authentication into the SD-WAN network, but it seamlessly orchestrates the control and management plane for all SD-WAN devices, even for devices needing to cross NAT boundaries. Thank you so much for joining me today. Look out for more Cisco SD-WAN 101 series videos for information into other Cisco SD-WAN components and concepts. And please subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on SD-WAN cloud and networking features.